Welcome to the wondrous world of omakase sushi, everybody. If you want to see some rare and exotic sushi varieties, then you've come to the right place. What you're about to behold is a 20-piece sushi feast, most of which I've never even heard of before. So sit back and relax because the show is about to begin. So I was cruising and perusing around the mean streets and bamboo forests of Kamakura, Japan. The scenery was looking pretty nice, downright inspirational in fact. You might even say I was getting in touch with my spiritual side, but no amount of temple visits was going to sate my hunger, and truth be told, I was starting to feel a tad ravenous right about now. So I scoped out a goldfish pot and came to the sudden realization that I wanted to eat some fish flesh. Lucky for me, word on the street was there was a mighty fine sushi bar nearby, so I decided to check it out. So I sprinted on over to the place. Apparently, the name of the sushi bar is called Wasabi. That's a pretty nice name, if I do say so myself. A decent name, in fact. So I boosted on into the place, and it was looking traditional to the max and authentic as fuck. It seemed like a legit establishment, to say the least, and I was getting pretty excited to try it out. You might even say I was feeling the tad afnar, aka aroused for no apparent reason. Now, it was a pretty chilly autumn day, but lucky for me, this place had some kotatsu heater action, and it was keeping my feet pretty toasty. Anyway, right about now, the sushi maestro started prepping his omakase sushi course, and I figured I'd give it a go. Now, you might know what omakase is, but I sure as hell didn't. I had to look that shit up, and according to the interwebs, omakase is a Japanese meal where the chef chooses everything you eat item by item. In other words, you leave it up to a pro. I kinda like that philosophy. I wish I could apply it to my whole damn life. Anyway, I poured out some cold sake to wet that palate. I slammed back a shot, then it wasn't long before the maestro started making our first pieces of sushi. Now this one right here is a piece called Isaki. I never tried it before, never even heard of it before, but I like to try new things, baby. So I grabbed that bad boy with my hand, not because I wanted to, but because the maestro recommended I eat with my hand. So I looked at that puppy for a moment, then I jammed it down the hatch. Now, I wanted to like that sushi, but the moment I bit in, I knew it would never work between us. It was kinda tough, and it had a sinewy texture, and it wasn't exactly my style. Nevertheless, I was optimistic that things were looking up in life. So the next sushi on deck was a fish called Hata, another one I've never heard of nor tasted. It looked like a pretty decent fish, and I had the impression that this fish had some potential. It seemed like a fish that was moving up in the food chain, so I looked at it for but a moment, then I chomped down on that puppy. And whoa, baby, I was pleasantly surprised. That fish was juicy and sweet and good enough to eat. In fact, it was tasting so nice that I felt inspired to have a little bit more sake. Can you blame me? Anyway, next fish on deck was called Hobo, yet another one I've never had nor heard of. Man, oh man, I'll tell you, with all these exotic sushi varieties, I feel like there's a damn safari going on inside my mouth. So I grabbed that hobo, gave it a dip, looked at it, admired it, then jammed it into my face. And as soon as I bit down, I was feeling a tad sad. Strange as it may sound, I felt like that hobo literally had no flavor at all. In fact, it almost brought a tear to my eye. Anyway, next on deck was yet another sushi variety completely new to me, a little thing I like to call Sawara Sushi. This thing had a basic no-frills appearance, but I thought it was looking pretty nice, so I jammed it down the hatch and oh, man. That was a pretty good piece of sushi. It was light and juicy, and I felt like I had reached a turning point in this meal. I felt like the sushi quality was getting higher and higher, and I was mighty excited to try the next piece. So the next one on deck was called Kin Medai, yet another new one for me. 
Now, even though I never heard of this fish before, apparently it's a well-known and beloved fish, so I figured I'd make my acquaintance pronto. And I gotta say, the way that red skin was glistening and the light was looking downright majestic and whoa, baby. That fish was tasting fluffy and flavorful, and I gotta say, I was loving it to bits. So let's see what else we got around here. Next up was some hirame, also new to me, and I gotta say, it was looking pretty nice. Now, I was just dying to dip that bad boy into the soy sauce, but the maestro said there's no need, there's already sauce on the top. So I launched that bad boy into my throat, and holy mother of dogs. That radish paste and ponzu sauce on the top was tasting citrusy as hell and zesty as fuck. And you best believe I was literally at a loss for words. Anyway, it was time to move on to the next exciting phase of my life, a little thing I like to call Akagai. It's a buck wild bivalve, which I had never tried, and I got to admit, the mere sight of that bivalve was getting me in touch with my sensual side. What can I say? I'm a mollusk man through and fucking through, and you best believe I was getting pretty excited to jam that bivalve down the hatch. And whoa, baby, we had some slightly bitter, slightly sweet flavors popping off with a firm texture, and even I got to admit that right there was a nice fucking bivalve. Now, as if that wasn't reason enough to get excited, the maestro came out with yet another mollusk. It was a sea snail called Awabi, and holy shit, look at that sauce. Now, technically, I've had this particular kind of sea snail when I was living in Korea, but I never had it in Japan before, and I was getting pretty excited, borderline aroused. I mean, just look at that sauce glistening in the light. You best believe I jammed that piece of sushi in the general direction of my head. And wow, just wow, if that ain't the very definition of oishi, then I don't know what is. That was the best piece of sushi I had in this set so far. It had a syrupy sweet sauce, it had a slightly rubbery texture, and it had a flavor that was fresh to death. Key takeaway, nice fucking mollusk right there. And speaking of mollusks, we got us yet another one on deck. What we got here is a seared tired guy, and I'm gonna go out on a limb over here and say that's looking pretty nice. Yet again, I'm completely new to this sushi, so I jammed that mollusk down the hatch, and whoa, baby. I've had many a mollusk in my day, but even for me, it's obvious to see that right there is a pretty nice mollusk, dare I say, a decent mollusk. It was a bit chewy and a bit smoky flavored, and it was pretty nice, although it was not life-changing. Anyway, next up was some Kohada, and this was finally a piece of sushi that I could say I've had before. That puppy was shiny as hell, and it was kind of hard for my camera to focus on it. Nevertheless, I jammed it down my throat. Now, unfortunately, I got to admit I was not a big fan of that fish. It had a slight vinegar flavor, but otherwise was pretty devoid of taste. So I decided to move on with my life, and the next piece of sushi on deck was called Shime Saba. Now, this is another sushi I have had before, and I got to admit I didn't like it in the past, but I'm gonna keep an open mind. I mean, after all, this fish is looking pretty good. You gotta grant that much. So I feverishly bit down on that sushi like my very survival depended on it. And man, oh man, that was some pretty good saba right there. The ones I've had in the past were over marinated with vinegar and sugar, but this one was tasting just right. It was juicy to the max and slightly vinegary, and I loved it to bits. Now, the next sushi on deck was something called shako, which is apparently mantis shrimp. I knew these things were some pretty tenacious critters, but I didn't know they made sushi out of them. I kind of liked the idea of eating some buck wild critter, and I was feeling a little bit frisky, so I jammed that bad boy down the hatch, and whoa. That was a sweet treat that was tasting delicate as hell and gourmet to the motherfucking max. So next up was a fish called Ta Chiu, which I for one had never heard of. The maestro seared that bad boy and put some salt between the fish and the rice so there was no soy sauce needed. And man, oh man, look at that fish, it's looking pretty rustic. 
It looks like the kind of sushi they ate in caveman days, so I jammed that into my mouth and whoa! That fish was tasting simple yet elegant. It was pretty juicy with a gritty texture and a slightly salty flavor and overall I gotta say it was quite nice. Anyway, next up we had some kani in the house. Now, I've had plenty of crab in Japan, but I can't remember actually having some crab sushi. Could this be changing day in my life? I think it is. So I furiously bit down on that sushi, and it was tasting pretty good, but it was neither history-making nor game-changing. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was nice, but it was not the crab to end all crabs, that's all I'm trying to say. Anyway, after all those wild, untamed sushi varieties, the maestro finally came out with a classic. A little thing called Chu Toro. And I got to admit, that medium fatty tuna was looking like the fish I was searching for in my life. So I contemplated the meaning of the universe for but a moment, then I slammed that puppy into my mouth. And the exact moment that I bit down on that raw fish flesh, I was feeling real frisky. That chutoro had somewhat of a melt-in-your-mouth quality to it, and I knew the second I bit into that bad boy that that fish had died for a good cause. A real good cause, baby cakes. So next up was another classic, a little thing I like to call Ika. And as you can see, the maestro had that Ika chillaxing on a piece of seaweed, and I thought that was a nice touch. I don't know why, but something about that seaweed action made that sushi look futuristic as fuck. That looked like some kind of space age sushi right there, so I figured I'd bite down on that bad boy. And I gotta say, as soon as I started chewing on that Ika, I was pleasantly surprised. Usually, I'm not too big on the whole squid sushi scene, but in this case, it was tasting quite soft. There was even some lime and salt on the top, which was tasting mighty zesty. So next up was some onigo action. In other words, we got us a saltwater eel on our hands. Now, if you were to tell me 20 years ago that my future self would be spending my free time eating some damn eels, I would have thought you were crazy. Yet here I am, about to slam some high-quality eel flesh down the hatch. So I took a quiet moment for self-reflection, then I animalistically bit down on that puppy. And that onigo was soft. It was real soft. I did like it, but I couldn't help but compare it to unagi, which is the freshwater eel. Personally, I prefer that unagi, which has a gritty texture and a more rustic taste. But hey, I can't complain. Anyway, right about now, the maestro was moving on to his own personal favorite sushi. A little thing called kampyo, aka dried gourd. Now, the maestro had an interesting technique. He put a shitload of fresh wasabi in that kampyo roll. He said that other maestros don't usually do that. In other words, what we got here is a pretty unique maestro. I like the way this maestro thinks. He seems to be an innovative maestro of sorts. Now, he said you could have those pieces with soy sauce or without, so I figured I'd try that first piece without, and wow. That kampyo was sweet and tangy, and that fresh wasabi was like an atomic bomb of zestiness blasting up my nose. So for the next piece, I figured I'd try that with the soy sauce, so I gave it a little dip. So I bit down on that mofo, and this time the wasab was so intense that I felt like I had a moment of clarity. What I'm trying to say in a roundabout way is that kampyo was so good that it not only woke me up on a physical level, but also a spiritual level. So after I chugged some green tea, it was time for one more piece of sushi. Just one more. Here we got some tamagoyaki, which had a cake-like consistency. It felt cold and moist, and I was getting pretty frisky to try it out. So I looked at that tamagoyaki like it held the very meaning of life itself, and then I jammed it into my mouth. And whoa, 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 baby. That tamagoyaki was cold, sweet, and soft, and it had the texture of banana bread. It was the perfect ending to one crazy-ass meal, and I gotta say, although this wasn't the best sushi I ever had, it most certainly was the most buck-wild. And after eating 20 pieces of sushi, most of which I've never even heard of before, it's an experience I won't soon forget.
By the way, I'm curious, which piece of sushi did you think looked the best? You can tell me in the comments section down below, and as always, thanks for watching this video. Why don't you leave a comment? Let me know what you think.